Now that we have our schemas, our database set up and tables and everything, it's time for us to come back to our IDE here and start putting things together in code. Okay, you'll notice that I went ahead and took the liberty to create a few packages here. First one was database package. And I have a few configurations here. This is from previous videos. So I have this configs class with local host database name and everything, right? So make sure for your database name, DB name to put the exact name we gave to our database here, right? This is very important. Otherwise, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of issues. Okay. And of course, your password root and local host, it should be the same as the previous time you did this. Okay. And next we I created this constants or const class, it's just simple class with few static final variables here or users table, that way I can just reference the tables as, a, as opposed to having to write users and tasks every time. In fact, since we're here, I'm going to add column names as well. Okay, this is going to be good. So again, we're able to reference things easier. This is going to be tasks. Let's start with users. I'm going to say users first name. Say this first name as such. Again, this first name here has to be exactly the same. If you go to users, to columns, they have to be exactly the same as we wrote here. That's very, very important. Let's copy this. This is going to be users last name. Last name as such. Then is password. Let's change this back to caps. And gender. Okay, this is columns. I'm going to call users table column names. Okay, and go ahead and copy this and paste it in. This now is going to be tasks table column names. I'm going to change this to tasks. For our task, let's see what do we have. In fact, let's add another one here. It's going to be user ID. Oops, change this. This is going to be user ID as such because we still need the ID. So it is user ID. We'll see this. You'll see this in action when it's time. So far, this is going to be tasks ID. Call it task ID like this. All right, so task uh, we have this is going to be. Task date. We call this date. Create. 
created. And then we have tasks description. Call this description such and the rest is not needed. All right. Again, you'll see this in action when we are ready. And next, what I did, I added this database handler class here, which will work on it a little bit more. But for now, it's the same database handler that we had before, where we're creating that connection and returning the connection inside of a configs file. And we're passing the port and the name. Of course, we're calling the, the driver and then we are establishing the connection and we're passing the password or the user and, as, and the password. Of course, we return the connection, which we can use anywhere. So what are we going to be doing here is later we are going to write the method that, that is responsible for, for saving or writing to our database, read, update, and delete. Okay, that will be for next time. Let's set up our login. Let's get rid of all of these. Okay, let's go to login here and right click, open in scene builder. So for our login here, what we're going to do is okay, let's go ahead and wire things up. Let's make sure that we have all of the things that we need. For instance, let's go to controller. Everything is connected as that's great. Let's go set up our login and sign up in code. Let's start with, with our login here. So login, what we're going to do on login button, instead of say login clicked, I'm going to go ahead and call login user function method and of course we haven't created this we're going to go ahead and create it now there we go private login user this login user here we're going to pass two things right first one is going to be user name and then string password okay we're going to pass those here so in order for us to get the username and password, well, we have our text fields here, login user. Let's get that first. I'm going to say string login login text. I'm going to say is equal to login username dot get text. And I'm going to go ahead and call this trim method. So that way we can trim everything and then string login pwd for password. I'm going to say login password that get text. And I'm going to also trim just to make sure. So because we understand here, I'm going to say if login login text that equals empty. In this case, let's negate this. So if not, login text is empty or login password still say equals empty. So if those are not empty, either or, I'm going to then be able to call our login user and I'm going to pass our login text and PWD password as such. Else, we're going to say s out for now. Error logging in user. Okay, very simple here. So instead of a login user, this is where we are going to write the logic to log in our users. So the idea here is once the login button is clicked, we're going to make sure that we get all the information from our user interface right from user name and password i'm going to check to make sure that it's not empty and when that is true that those two text fields are not empty we are going then to call the login user which we're passing the username and the password okay now here is where we are going to find in a database we're going to check in the database if the user exists Right? So we're going to go and check if whatever, if the user exists, if that's true, then we take them true. We take them to details to, we take them to add item screen. 
Okay. But what we're going to do now is allow this sign up button here to be clicked. And once it's clicked, we want to take users to sign up. That way they can go ahead and sign up. And then we're going to take that information and put it in our database. This is what we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and wire things up real quick here. I'll go to our sign up inside here, initialize again. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say login sign up, set on action, say event as such. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and say take users to sign up screen. So in order for us to take the user to the next screen here, we have to do a few things. First of all, we have to fetch our current screen. How do we do that? Well, we know that our all of our buttons and text fields are inside of our view or our stage. So what we can do, I can say login password. In fact, I can use any of these items here, but I just so happen to use this login password. Actually, to be consistent, how about using the login sign up button? I'm going to say dot get seen that get window as such. And we're going to finalize say dot hide. So we're going to hide this current window here. Once we've done that, uh, we are going to go ahead and open the second window. Now we have to populate our second window. In this case, it's going to be our sign up FX here. So we have to load it up for in order for us to, to show it. So I'm going to say FXML loader object. I'm going to call this loader is equal to new FXML loader as such. Okay. And I'm going to say loader, this object we have, I'm going to set location, I'm going to just pass in get class here, and get resource because we want to be able to access where our sign up FXML is, in this case, it's going to be under sample, right, view, and sign up that FXML, and such, right, because we are sample, we go inside of view package, and then sign up. Then once we have that, we are ready to go and say loader dot load. Of course, we're going to have some issues here because things could go wrong. So we have to surround it with try and catch. So now we're going to create another parent. Go call this root. We're going to pass in the loader object and get the root. Okay. We're going to create our stage object. So it's equal to new stage. And then we're going to set the stage scene to our stage that we just to a new scene. And then inside we're going to pass our root. Okay. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to say stage dot show. Let's use show and wait. Now, whenever you want to know exactly the implementation of a certain method, you can go say command and click on that. It takes you to the actual implementation, right? And it tells you a little bit more about it. So it says this method must not be called on the primary stage or on a stage that is already visible. It must be either be called from an input event listener, which is what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. And it must not be called and all that stuff. Okay, so we're doing it all right. Perfect. Let's save this and give it a run. and see if this works. So the idea here is since we've connected our sign up, if we click, we should be able to not see it says here location is not set thread illegal exception. Alright, so what is the problem sign up FX? Oh, there is the problem folks. I made a mistake it should be FX ML, not LM. Ooh. That was the problem. <laughs> Let's run once again. It should work this time, fingers crossed. And there we go. Now we are indeed inside of our next, which is in our sign up FXML file. Very cool. So this is where we will be able to start writing things, putting names and so forth. And then when we say sign up, we're going to be able to fetch all of this information and then save it in our database. All right, and we will do that in the next video.